The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So today we're going to talk about uh, communication networks. Communication networks is a great application of uh, graph uh, theory. So what we're going to study is uh, how do you route uh, packets through networks. So you have uh, the internet, which is a chaotic network. It's not organized. We are interested in highly structured uh, networks. And uh, you can find them, for example, in uh, parallel computers where you want to route um, uh, the data flow. Uh, you can find them in uh, certain uh, telephone switch uh, uh, um, uh, networks and so on. So we are going to talk about few, a few very special ones, uh, binary trees, and then slowly we will figure out what all these performance measures really mean. This one has to do with latency. We have switches, their size, the number of them, congestion. And then we will slowly get down to Bennett's network, which is a really beautiful network with beautiful uh, parameters, and we're going to prove those. So um, let's start off with uh, uh, the first one, the complete binary tree. And let me draw it for you. In this uh, network, we will have um, uh, a root. And let me just uh, draw it first. We have uh, vertices that uh, represent here the switches. So these circles, let me explain it over here, actually represent a switch. And the idea is that these actually direct um, uh, packets through the network. And these packets are fixed sized uh, packets of data. So like, I don't know, say 4,000 uh, bytes or, or, or bits or whatever the network wants you to comply to. So these are fixed sized pieces of data. So what we want is we want to uh, be able from every terminal, and the terminal I will denote by a square, from every terminal I want to be able to uh, reach any other terminal. So what is a terminal? Terminal is like a computer or something like that. It's, uh, it's, it's actually the source and the destination of data. So what we're looking for is how can we route, how we can find a network of switches uh, that are connected through wires, fibers, or, yeah, that's the question. Uh, the top of the is getting cut off. Uh, no, the, that one. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you. Um, so what we want is we want to uh, route uh, packets that come from any terminal to any other terminal. That is what our goal is, and we want to uh, make sure that that is efficient. So the first one is this binary tree. And let's uh, um, see how this may work. We may have switches that actually um, that actually have uh, inputs coming from uh, terminals. And the switches may also output to terminals. These are here at the bottom. At this side, we have a similar uh, structure. This is the root of the tree. We have another switch over here. We go down, we go up here, and once more, like this. And again, we have, oops, we have input coming in or an output coming out to their respective terminals. So what is happening here is that uh, I would like to have an uh, input, say input zero, wants to 
travel all the way over to say the output that is present over here. So let me label these. So we have uh, the output zero, input one, output one, input two, and output two, input uh, three, and output four. So, uh, well, I can definitely reach uh, every single output from any input, so that's great. So this looks like uh, something that you are familiar with, right? It's like just a tree. We have, essentially, it's a directed tree, but, but uh, I mean, it's a directed graph, but these uh, edges go in both directions, right? So I have an edge that goes from here to here and back from here to here. So. This is the kind of uh, layout that you could uh, try out first to see whether this type of network would lead to good performance. So let's uh, have a look at the different parameters and see uh, how well this behaves. So here we have a few parameters that we, built, that we will be talking about. Um, so first of all, let's talk about uh, the latency in this particular network. So how are we going to measure this? Well, we're going to look at this graph and we're going to measure it by the number of wires that you need to go through from an input to an output. So let me write this down. So the latency is the time that is required uh, for a packet to travel um, to travel from an input to an output. And how are we going to measure this? Well, we're just going to measure this by the number of wires that we need to go through. So this you have seen before. We can measure this by the diameter of that particular graph. So. Here we will define it for a network. So the diameter of a network is going to be the length of the shortest path between, between the input and output. that are furthest apart. So let's have a look at the uh, graph above. Um, so for example, uh, we can clearly see that, for example, uh, input and output, so, so say input zero and output one are connected by just going up uh, one step over here. But just going up from here to here then this switch forwards the packet to this switch. This switch reroutes it, forwards it over here, and then it goes back to the output, output one. So for example, this particular path only has one, two, three, four uh, edges. And what we're interested in is uh, sort of the worst case uh, time that it requires to go from an input to an output. So that means that we are interested in a diameter, and a diameter is in this case, well, the shortest path that you can find from an input to, uh, to an output that are furthest apart. So what are those who are furthest apart? Well, of course you would like to go through here, right? So if I connect the input zero to say output four, I will need to go, I will need to go all the way up through the root down to the output. And how many edges do we see here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So in this example, we have a diameter that is equal to 6. And in general, if we are looking at, uh, at uh, uh, n times n network, so what does that mean? n is the number of inputs, and n is also the number of outputs. So in this case, we have a uh, 4 times, oh, this is actually 3 over here. We have, a, uh, four, we have 4 inputs and 4 outputs. So this particular example depicted on the board is a 4 times 4 network. 
So if you generalize this for any size uh, binary tree, um, uh, say an n times n network, then how many, uh, yeah, what's the diameter of this, of, of, of such a general network? Well, if we have n inputs and n outputs, well, we have to go all the way up through towards the root and all the way down. So we actually count the length of a leaf to the root here twice. So in general, we have a diameter that looks like this. It's uh, two times uh, one plus the logarithm of n. So in this uh, lecture, we will have n is going to be a power of two, just to make calculations uh, simple. And uh, the logarithm is always to the base two. So this is the diameter of a general uh, binary tree. And, uh, well, what are the other uh, parameters? So that does not look too bad. I mean, it's logarithmic in N, so that sounds pretty good. What about uh, the switch uh, sizes? Well, how do I measure those? It's like the number of inputs that get into it and the number of outputs that get out. So in this case, I will have one, two inputs that go into this switch and there are two outputs coming out. So this is what we call a two times two switch. So this would be a two times two switch. But if you look at this one, for example, we see one, two, three outgoing edges and one and, and, and three ingoing edges. So this is actually a three times three switch. And uh, in a general uh, binary tree, we will see that uh, all these intermediate nodes over here, they're all three times three switches. So the, the most, uh, the, the, the approximately half of the switches are actually three times three switches. So that's a switch size. Um, now you may say, well, uh, why don't I use like a larger sized uh, switch? That would help me a lot, right? If I could uh, uh, use, say, a four times four switch, then I would be able to have more inputs coming in, more outputs coming out, and I can actually uh, maybe use a ternary tree rather than a binary tree. In a binary tree, every, every node at the level has like two children, right? but we could design a tree that has at every level three children. So then we can use four times four switches. If we do that, then the path from the leaf up to the root is getting shorter and the diameter gets smaller. So if I increase sort of the switch size, so rather than three times three, we look at four times four or five times five, six times six, and so on, then the diameter will actually uh, reduce. So what about having a monster switch, uh, like I have just one switch and I have my input zero all the way up to input um, n minus one, and then I have uh, my outputs on the other side. Well, of course the switch size is n times n, but the diameter is, uh, is, is nothing, right? There's, uh, that you can immediately go from, the diameter is re reduced to one, you can immediately go from an input to an output through the switch. But this of course conceals the problem. So what we're interested in is, well, we're actually really interested in, 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 in how to solve the problem of routing all these inputs to these outputs using uh, smaller, basic, smaller sw switches of, of size three times three or two times two. What we're really interested in is what is the internal structure in this monster switch? I sort of have con concealed the problem by just saying, oh, I got a big switch. But, you know, uh, what we want to solve today is, how do we do the routing uh, in, in this case within the monster switch? So we want to use just small switch sizes and build up a network using these smaller ones, like three times three switches or two times two switches. Um, now, um, so um, that brings us to yet another parameter because he would like to count the number of smaller switches that we use and that relates to the cost of the network. Uh, 
the amount of hardware that you need to put into it. So in this example, we have uh, the switch um, uh, count. Well, it's pretty simple, right? It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven switches. And in general, um, yeah, if we have uh, n inputs, so one, two, three, four inputs, then the number of switches that we use in the binary tree is two times the number of inputs minus one. Um, so let's write that down. So over here we would have two times n minus one, which is the number of switches that you actually use. Um, so how can you see that actually? Uh, so in general we have uh, one plus two plus four plus eight and so on plus n. n is a power of two according to our assumptions. And if you add them all up, uh, I think you'll well, you can check for yourself that this is actually equal to two times n minus one. Okay, so now we have uh, the switches. So, so far this looks uh, pretty good actually. Uh, we use small switch sizes, the number of switches is uh, linear in n, Lo diameter is logarithmic in n, so that sounds good. So what about congestion? Do you have any idea what, what's, what's the problem with this graph? What is the m big, big problem here? What can happen in a very, uh, yeah, sort of a worst case scenario where the packets get routed from the inputs to the outputs if they, if they need to go to certain locations, then, then they may all, may have to travel through the route. So you get congestion over here. We don't like that. So this route is actually then overloaded. Actually, you can already see that if, say this, this particular switch, if this switch uh, fails, then actually we will have two disjoint trees that cannot even communicate to one another. So uh, this brings us to, uh, to, to the idea of congestion. And uh, in order to define it better, we will need a few definitions. So uh, to start, we will define a permutation. And we will use this to uh, uh, stipulate the requirements that we want on how inputs and outputs are uh, related to one another, which input needs to communicate to which output. So permutation is a function, function pi, from the set 0 to n minus 1 to the same set, and um, it is such that no two numbers, um, no no two numbers are mapped to more than ones. So no two numbers are mapped to uh, the same value. So what we really want, in, uh, to put it in mathematics, right? We want that pi of i is only equal to pi of j, well, if and only if uh, i is equal to j. So let's have uh, an example uh, to plug into that picture over there. So a first example could be um, pi of i equals, say, n minus 1 mi mi minus i. This is a proper permutation. Uh, no two numbers map to the same value. Another one could be the identity permutation, like you map uh, i to the same i. So that's another example. Now, how do we use uh, permutations to go towards the idea of congestion? So permutation can be used to formulate the permutation routing problem. And the permutation uh, routing problem um, is defined like this. Um, it's defined as follows. What we want is that for each i, we want to direct the packets 
at input i to output pi of i. So you want to do that for all i. So let's have a look at, uh, at, at this particular example where we look at the identity permutation. So if you do that, we can easily route these, right? So I want to send a packet from input zero to output zero. So I can simply go into this direction. I just go towards this switch and it gets routed back to this one. I can go like this and this one can go like this and this one goes like that. Now if you look at the other permutation, the picture looks very different. Now we want to route input zero to uh, output three. In order to do this, I will actually need to go all the way through here and then all the way down to this particular output. And now the picture gets into a big mess because uh, for input one, we have to go to output uh, three, uh, output two. So for input one, well, we go all the way like this. We again go through the root and then we go down uh, to this particular output. And as you can see, for, for, for input two, if well, we need to connect to output one, so again we go all the way up and we go all the way down. And for this one, we will again go all the way up and all the way down to input zero. So now you can see that this particular switch over here has to serve packets from all uh, the inputs. All the four packets have to travel through this particular node here. So this leads us to uh, the following definition of congestion. So the congestion uh, Uh, so, oh, before we continue, let me first uh, define a, a path. So for each i, we direct a packet at input i to output pi of i, and the path that corresponds to this route is actually denoted by uh, 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 as, uh, as followed. So the path uh, taken is denoted by p i pi i. So now we can define uh, the congestion of a set of such paths. So the, conge the congestion of the path corresponding to uh, p zero to p pi zero, and so on, and we go all the way up to the n minus one th input that needs to be met to pi of n minus one. So the congestion is now defined as the number to the largest number of paths that pass through a single switch. So in our example, we saw that in the case of the blue arrows here, which for the identity permutation, well, uh, this switch only needs to transmit one packet, and all those actually zero packets. So actually the congestion here is equal to one. And for this particular permutation, well, we had to direct all the packets through the root, and that's the worst, uh, the most accessed switch, and that switch has congestion four, right? So the congestion over here is equal to four. Now this does not look so good because uh, for a binary tree, we always have this vulnerable root that is right here in the center connecting the left side to the right side. So we can always find a permutation, actually this permutation over here, that leads to this worst case congestion. So 
what we're interested in is the maximum congestion, which is sort of the worst case scenario, and we'll define it as follows. The maximum congestion is actually equal to the maximum over all permutations pi. So this is kind of the worst case routing problem that I can imagine, and that may occur in practice. So in the worst case, how can I solve it the best? So I want to find the minimum uh, of the congestion. I want to find the minimum congestion of a pass over here. And uh, the minimum is over these types of paths. So actually, this is uh, our solution to this routing problem. We want to find the best kind of solution for this worst case scenario. So uh, the minimum over all solutions for these paths. So, uh, well, for, for this particular tree structure, this permutation is really the worst case scenario that you can have because every packet needs to be routed through the center over here. And that means that our maximum congestion for an arbitrary tree is actually equal to n. So, now that... that, that that looks really bad, actually. So we don't like this uh, uh, at all. So let's find out whether we can do a little bit better. And uh, we're going to, to look at the uh, two-dimensional array and see uh, what that would uh, lead up to. And its structure is as follows. Um, we essentially have inputs on uh, the left and uh, the outputs are on the bottom, and they are in a grid structure. So we have input 0, input 1, input 2, input 3. They all connect to their terminals. We have switches, um, four of those, and they are all connected in this grid. And at the very bottom, we will have the outputs, the output terminals. So this is output uh, uh, zero. And here we will have output one, output two, and output three. So I notice that my circles start to resemble my squares, but these are all the switches right here in the center. So how does this work? Well, um, well, do we have a better, a better parameter? So let's uh, look at it together. So we need to first of all figure out what the diameter is. So what's the diameter of this particular uh, network? So what's the, fur what's the shortest path between the furthest uh, input and output. So, well, if you look at that, we can see that if I go from all the way from here and I go all the way down to this corner, that looks like the largest uh, path, and I need to cross all these uh, wires. And in general, for any n, we will have that the diameter is two times n. Now, what about the switch uh, size? It looks a little bit smaller, right? Because over here we had three inputs coming in and three outputs coming out. But over here we see that every single switch has only two inputs and two outputs. So that makes the size uh, two times two. Uh, now the number of switches is pretty bad, right? Because we have n square switches. So that's, that's really horrible. That's, that, that's a lot. We would like to do much better. 
And what about the congestion? Do you have any idea what the congestion could be in this particular case? We will prove a theorem on that. So is there a way to uh, map, uh, for any permutation, is there a way to map uh, the inputs, uh, to route the inputs to the outputs in such a way that the switches get almost not congested? So in the binary tree, we had a congestion of, 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 of n, which is linear in the switches. But uh, over here, we can do much better. We will show that uh, the congestion Uh, of an n input array is actually equal to two. So that's great. So, so I'll, I'll prove it in a moment, but uh, that looks really fantastic. And uh, so it's way better than uh, the binary tree. Now this is really not so good, and this is also much larger, but, but still, um, we will start to think next, after we show this particular property, uh, how to combine these two and see how we can come up with another network that maybe combine, that, that's able to combine in some ways these two properties. And maybe we can find a good solution that way. Turns out we will not immediately be able to do that. We will need to make another step and come to the last uh, network that really has good uh, parameters. So what about the theorem? So if you prove this, well, how do we start? You just start with any permutation. If I want to prove something about congestion, it's defined as the maximum over all permutations. Well, let's, let's take one of them and see what we can prove. So let's... Um, uh, So let us define uh, the paths for this permutation as follows. So what we really want to do is we take any permutation and we want to find a really good solution for the routing. If that, were, if that gives us a very low congestion, we are very happy. So the way to do this is, well, maybe you have an idea already. Um, so how would I uh, route this? So I want to connect an input uh, I, say 1 to output 2, for example. Um, how can I do this? Any suggestions? So, of course I could go any path, but somehow I want to have some uniform structure that hopefully helps me to prove that the congestion in every switch is very small. So how could I think about this? Um, well, um, if I make sure that, uh, say, a, a packet that goes from 1 to output 2 is only going to be participating in the wires of the uh, i-th row and the p-i-th column, then I know that uh, every wire will only get uh, traveled over uh, twice uh, it, it could, it, uh, by, by a packet. It could either be uh, a packet that goes into this direction, or uh, so, so a switch will be accessed at most twice. A switch can either receive a packet from this direction or receive a packet from, uh, from, from, the, um, from the upper part. So that will be a really good idea. So let's uh, define that. So we say that in our solution, we will design it such that the path from input i is actually going to be rightward uh, to column pi i, and then downward to the output. So downward to um, output pi i. So this is a really uh, good solution to the routing problem, because now we can uh, continue our proof as follows. We just say, well, um, if you look at the switch in row i and uh, column pi i, well, this one actually transmits at most two packets. B 
because a packet can only come from, um, uh, from the uh, uh, left or it can go from uh, the top. So either one of the two, uh, at most those two packets will go through the switch. So this shows that we have uh, a congestion of uh, at most two for any permutation. And in order to prove equality, because that's really what the theorem says, we also have to show that there exists a permutation that achieves uh, a congestion of two. And that is uh, pretty straightforward. We can, for example, use a specific uh, permutation that maps zero to zero and maps n minus one to n minus one. Well, for this particular permutation, when we look at uh, the picture over here, we said that we see that input zero needs to go to output zero. Um, we also see that this uh, lowest um, uh, input, input three, needs to travel all the way up to here. But it's clear that the packet that needs to go over here needs to travel through that switch in the lower um, um, left bottom corner. And uh, the input three also needs to travel through that. So here we clearly see that we have a congestion of two. So now the proof is complete because we have shown uh, this upper bound. So for any permutation, the congestion is at most two. And we uh, see that um, this specific permutation achieves uh, this congestion. So this is the end of this pr proof. Okay, so that's great. So now what we like to do is we like to combine these two uh, networks and see what we can learn from both. So now we'll be taking out a lot of uh, chalk over here. So the idea is to construct a butterfly network and uh, I will draw it in such a way that you can see the recursive structure. And the idea is to, um, to, uh, to do the following thing. So let me uh, see how I can do this the best. Um, so I will just do the, the, the top line first and I have the spacing. So we have uh, input zero a terminal, we have a switch, we have a switch, we have a switch and another one. And here we have the output zero. So the whole idea is that I'm going to combine every two outputs uh, by using uh, a small butterfly structure. So we have two output three, output four. Actually, I need a little bit more space. Do it once more. Output one, two, three, four, five, six, and the last one, seven. Okay, this is going to be pretty tight on the board. So what's happening is this. So these are all connected, of course, to switches. The switches output those. And uh, the idea is that we create the following structure. This switch can either forward it over here or can cross it over to this particular line. And this switch can either forward it or cross it over to this line. So this is a very small butterfly structure where we have two inputs and two outputs. And we will repeat this process and we'll do the same on each of these other levels. So we forward those or we cross them. Like this. And now that we have constructed all these smaller butterfly structures, we can start to combine two butterfly structures together in the bigger one. 
So here we had two outputs that we combined in a butterfly structure. And now we use two butterfly structures that we, con that we, uh, that we uh, put into a bigger uh, version. So how do we do this? Well, we have that the upper half over here can either forward those packets or cross them over to the bottom part butterfly structure. So for these, we can either forward them straight on or we can go to the top butterfly. So you see that these two inputs, these two switches, either can forward packets to this sub butterfly network or to the top butterfly network. Now we'll continue this process and for these we'll do the same. So we can either go straight or we go down. And over here we can go straight or we can go to the top butterfly network. Well, now we uh, have uh, the final part where we combine essentially these two butterfly networks. We have two butterfly networks created here now composed again of smaller ones, and now these two are being composed to this bigger butterfly network. Again, we take these four uh, switches, they can route their packets forward to the top uh, butterfly subnetwork or to the bottom one. So they can either go straight ahead or this one can connect to the first over here, this one to the second, to the third, and this to the fourth. And in the same style, these can forward them straight like this and then go up. <laughs> like this. And these are all connected because in this example, we just have an eight by eight uh, uh, network, butterfly network. We have uh, inputs. Uh, zero to seven. Okay, so this is the butterfly network. In a way, what you can see here, you can see sort of the, sort of the two-dimensional structure, like we have rows and columns. At the same time, we can also see this uh, binary sort of tree uh, feeling we get from it, which is that a switch can forward uh, sort of uh, its packets to either say the top uh, butterfly or the bottom butterfly. So there's a split in two. Uh, the same for this one, right? This one goes either to this butterfly network or it goes to this butterfly network. So you have this tree structure sort of Im embedded in this two dimensional structure. So what are the properties of this one? So let me first uh, define um, the, um, the uh, like, like in more form, formal mathematics, uh, how the switches uh, route their packets, so how their connections are. Um, so in order to do that, we are going to uh, label each uh, switch. And the idea is that we're going to label it by its uh, row and by its column. So we will have, um, uh, the columns are numbered by level zero, level one, level two, level three, uh, yes. And uh, the rows are these integers, but we're going to uh, represent them by binary numbers. So zero would be zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Uh, oops, one zero zero, one zero one, and then we got uh, uh, one one zero and one one one. So, for example, this particular switch would be labeled by these three bits zero zero one and the integer number one. This one would be zero one one, and uh, its column is uh, indexed by integer two. Okay, so a switch is uh, uniquely um, identified mm -hmm. 
by its uh, row and column. Uh, we will have uh, b1 up to b logarithm of n, which are the number of bits to represent the row in dishes. And we finally have an integer l, and this we will call the level. So the, this particular switch either directs uh, or, or routes a packet to the switch that is indexed by um, b1 up to, and then we get b l plus 1, and we take its complement. So instead of if b l plus 1 would be 1, we would have a 0 here. If it would be a 0, we will have a 1 over here. Um, but we repeat all the other bits, and we get uh, b log n, and uh, it routes its packet to the next level, so we will have l plus 1. Another possibility is, because there are two outgoing edges, is if we have just b1 and we just copy bl plus 1, essentially, we route the packet straight forward, we don't do anything special, we get b log n over here and then to the next level. So for example, let's see whether we can see how this works. So for example, take um, this particular switch we have uh, zero, 010, zero. so it can either go straight on to the next level, it would go to zero, 010, zero, but then instead of level 1 we have level 2, which is the right edge over there. Um, the other one is if this one goes up, well, uh, we will need to uh, switch the first, um, the first, um, uh, a bit over here, uh, one, we swap it into zero, and then we go to the three zeros over here, and we go to the next level, and that would be this particular uh, rule. So what we can do here is to, so, so with, when we see this, we can start to uh, figure out how we can direct inputs to outputs. Okay, so let's uh, do this. Um, So, suppose I want to uh, uh, route a packet from a certain input, one of, the, one of these, all the way to one of the outputs uh, over here. So, the way to do this is as follows. We can just start, for example, I want to go from switch x1 up to x log n, comma, uh, comma zero. So I start completely at the left over here, and I want to go somewhere of my choice to the right. So I want to somehow move all the way to some other row, y1, indexed by, y, by the bit pattern, y1 up to y log n. But now at the very last level, um, which is log n. Well, how do I do it? Well, this switch, I can use that rule up there and simply change x1 to y1. I can either leave x1 as it is, if it's the same as y1, or I can swap it to its complement, if that's the value of y1. So what I can do is I can just simply route it to uh, y1, and then I leave all the other bits the same, which are x2, x3, all the way up to x log n. And uh, we will have um, reached the first level. Now this one can go to, well, now I'm going to swap the second bit into the bit of my choice. So I leave all the other bits the same, y1 the same, x3, all the others the same. I just swap x2 into y2. So we leave all those to equal, and we go to the second level. And then we go all the way to the final level, and we one by one swap all these bits. So let's have an example. Um, 
suppose I want to connect, uh, say, uh, this one to, uh, um, for example, well, let's say this particular output. So uh, what's, the, what's the binary for this one? This is uh, actually 1, 0, 1. So um, if the first bit is different, I need to cross. And otherwise, I need to pass straight on. So let's do this. So over here, I'm in 0, 1, 1. I need to go to 1, 0, 1. So we need to change the 0 into a 1. So I need to go down. I need to cross. Now, uh, if I look at the second bit, um, I also need to, to change it into a 0. So again, I need to cross, which is over here. Now the third bit is equal to 1, and it's the same. So now I can go straight ahead. I do not cross. And I end up at this output. So what, do, so what did I do? For every bit that is different, I cross. And for the bits that are the same, I go straight ahead. So this is how I can route packets from one input to another output. OK. So let's uh, look at the parameters. Um, first of all, if we look at the, uh, uh, at, the, at the diameter, well, it turns out that that's equal, approximately equal to the, to the number of levels, which is the logarithm of n. And to be precise, it's actually equal to 2 plus the logarithm of n. So that's uh, great. That's a, good, uh, that's a good scaling. Again, it's back to the logarithm of n, so we have the best of these two parameters. The switches that we see have two inputs and two outputs. So we again have a 2 times 2 switch. Um, the number of switches is the number of rows times the number of columns. The number of columns is the logarithm of n. And the number of rows is, uh, is equal to n. And to make it a little bit precise, it's 1 plus the logarithm of n. So that's somewhere in between those two. But if you're thinking about it, it's much better than n squared. It's almost linear, except for a logarithmic factor. For the congestion, and we're not going to talk about it uh, here, but you have a problem set assignment that uh, will ask you to solve this, is that actually the congestion is the square root of n, uh, or it's equal to the square root of n over 2 depending on whether n is an uh, even power or n is an odd power. Now, we're not going to prove that here because we want to step forward to this particular network. It's very exciting. And uh, you will prove this in your problem set. So this one is somewhere in, in between, somewhere in between these two extremes. Now, it would be really fantastic if we can somehow transform this network with a trick to again have a really great congestion of just a constant, like, 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 like two or, or three or whatever, or maybe even one. So for this particular network, uh, in the 1960s, uh, Ben is a Bell Labs researcher, had the great idea to use a butterfly network and attach to it, again, a butterfly network, back to back, sort of. So. What was his idea? His idea was to, uh, to do the following. So the butterfly network, as we have it right now, is this particular part over here. And the idea is, is to uh, now to start up mixing all those outputs that we got here together again using a similar rule. So what do we do? we are going to, um, to essentially um, um, uh, repeat this particular structure on this side. OK, so how do we do it? Uh, well, we go either straight forward, or we start to mix them again. So it's like this output, this particular switch can either go straight ahead or can cross to the lower um, 
part over here. It goes over here, and this one goes over here. So as you can see, we have repeated this part. It's exactly the same as this structure over here. And we'll, we'll do the same for the, this part. So we can either cross or we can go straight ahead. Oh, uh, we also have, of course, that these switches can go straight ahead or can cross to the top. I forgot about that. So we have this, oops, as well. So as you can see, this particular structure repeats itself again, and we slowly start to build up and mixing all the uh, outputs again, or the possibility at least to route them to any other, uh, to any other uh, uh, um, uh, row. So how do we do this? Well, we continue this particular structure now over here. So all these can either go straight ahead, That's a possibility. Or they can go all down. So this switch can either go straight ahead or can go to the lower half. And for these, we have a similar structure. We can either go straight ahead or such a switch can cross over to the top over here. Okay, uh, so that's this. So this is Bainis network, and then over here, of course, we have uh, the outputs uh, zero, one, and all the way down to seven. Okay, so as you can see over here, this structure uh, again has a recursive nature to it. Uh, you can see that uh, this big Bennis network over here consists of two smaller ones that are right here in the middle. This one that goes all the way up to here, so maybe I should put uh, a color boundary around it. Uh, let me check. I want to do this. Right, so this particular part is again a Benes uh, network. And um, the top part in the same picture, the top subnetwork, is also a Benes network, this part. And if you look within those, we again see a top part and a bottom part. And over here we see a top part and also a bottom part. So um, you see this uh, recursive nature again reappearing. It turns out that with this trick we can completely eliminate congestion and we can get it to only one, which is really surprising. And that's what we're going to prove here. So this is a great uh, invention at the time. It's really, really beautiful. Um, so let me put in the other parameters. Um, so they stay approximately the same up to that the diameter is about twice as large because we added another sort of whole butterfly structure to it. The switches sizes stay the same. We again have about two times more switches. So they sort of stay about the same up to a linear uh, factor, like a, a constant factor. And uh, the congestion, however, completely dropped down to one. So that's what we're going to prove now. And in order to get some uh, intuition, well, let me first uh, write down the theorem. Um, actually, let me put this uh, over here. So in order to get some insight into this, uh, we are going to, um, well, we, we, we are going to use this recursive nature. So we're going to use induction and we're going to say, oh, 
I'm, I'm, I can really, for any permutation, I can find a really good routing for, say, this red subnetwork and for this blue subnetwork. So I know that. So what I need to do is to, to, to if, if, if I have my bigger uh, Bennis network, like this one, I would need to somehow map these inputs. Uh, I need to route them to either the top and the bottom subnetwork, one of the two, in such a way that there will be absolutely no congestion because we want to keep this one. So a switch should only see one packet coming in. So that means, for example, and we'll come back to that, that for example, for this switch, it should not receive a packet from both this input and from this input. So the intuition that we are going to create is we're going to uh, create like, we, 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 we're going to list our constraints, the constraints that we need to satisfy, like the zero and the fourth input should not both be mapped to this top subnetwork, and so on. So we will get into that, and then we will uh, gain a lot of intuition on how to uh, solve this. Okay, so what's the theorem? So the theorem is that the uh, congestion Uh, of uh, the n input uh, Benes network uh, is actually equal to one. Uh, and we will prove this for uh, n equal to a power of two. We have assumed that at the start of, 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 of we have with all the other networks as well. Um, and in this case, we will use induction on A. So that's uh, the method that we will do because that's also the recursive structure of the Banis network itself. So we will use induction on A. And uh, we come to define the induction hypothesis simply as the theorem is true for A. Okay, now let us do the base case. We always start with the base case, and that should be pretty easy because this is the most basic uh, Banis network. So n equals two to the power of one. Um, we essentially have uh, two inputs, an input zero and an input one. Uh, they are connected to these switches over here that can either forward them or can cross them over, and then they go directly to the output. Uh, notice that in this case, we just have the most elementary butterfly network, it's the same. So we have output uh, zero and output one. So this corresponds in this picture to these little small things over here, this one and this one and this one over here and the fourth one over here. Um, so now let's take uh, any permutation. We want to show that we can route it in such a way that there's only a congestion of one. So let's do this. Um, so, so there are essentially only two permutations. Either a zero is mapped to zero and one is mapped to one, or zero is mapped to one and one is mapped to zero. Um, so in both cases, we can just route them uh, through their own switches. So we have that uh, either pi of zero equals zero and pi of one equals one, in which case we just direct them straight through. There we go, straight through, and every switch only sees a packet once. So for this particular permutation, we have a congestion of one. Now the other permutation that we can have is if zero is mapped to one and if one is mapped to zero. Well, in that case, we just route this cross over to the bottom row and here we go from this switch to the, to the top row. Again, every switch only sees a packet once. So in this case, in the base case, we are done, we are happy. 
and we have shown that the congestion is equal to one. So now we get to uh, the harder part because for the inductive step, we are going to assume, of course, uh, that it holds true for a smaller uh, uh, Banish network. So we assume that uh, P A is true. And, uh, well, let's try to uh, gain some insight here. So we know that within each, from our induction hypothesis, within each subnetwork, we can achieve, a, 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 we can solve any routing problem with congestion one. And for this subnetwork, the same. That's our induction hypothesis. So how do we go ahead? We need to uh, somehow map these inputs according to the permutation of our choice. I mean, so that could be, for example, input zero goes to output five, or input one goes to uh, output two, etc. So somehow we need to choose where we are going to map this particular input to. So the packet that goes, packet zero that comes from this input should either go to the red network or should go to the blue network. And for each of these inputs, we can make such a choice. But we have to be very smart about it because we need to avoid any congestion. So the intuition is, is that we're going to uh, set up a constraint uh, uh, a graph, a graph that 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 uh, represents all the constraints that we need to satisfy in order to achieve congestion of one. So let's uh, do an example, such that we can figure out what's going on. Actually, let me put that over here. So the so I'll just take an example permutation, and we'll go through this example and then see how uh, the proof works. So let's, as an example, have pi of zero maps to one, pi of one maps to five, uh, pi of two goes to four, input three goes to seven, um, four maps to three, five to six, six to zero, and seven to two. So this is just an arbitrary permutation. And um, okay, so what do we see? We want to make sure that, for example, this switch is only seeing one packet. So it cannot see a packet both coming from input zero as well as from input four. I cannot see that. Uh, I do not want that to happen. Similarly, for this one, I do not want to see a packet coming from one or one from five. So let me define a constraint graph that sort of represents this. So the constraint graph that we are interested in is defined as follows. Um, if two packets uh, if two packets must pass through different networks, uh, subnetworks. So in our case, the red and the blue subnetwork. Then we'll actually um, have an edge between those two. So then there is an edge uh, between them. So for this example, we're going to set up this constraint graph. And uh, so I was just talking about this particular switch it cannot see one coming from four and a packet from zero. So what we do, what we have, we have an edge between zero and four. In the same way, we have an edge from uh, one to five. Why? Because a packet that comes from input one 
and a packet that comes from, from, output from input 5 cannot both be routed through this switch because then the switch would see two packets and then the congestion would not be one but two, right? So one and five also have an edge in between. And in the same way, we have two and six and seven and three. So two and six are these, uh, is this constraint, like two and six over here, and three and seven is the other constraint. So if I have those constraints in place, well, then I know that um, the routing that goes from level zero to level one will not violate my congestion of one. So that's great. Then I hope to be able to use the induction hypothesis and I get a proper routing within the red subnetwork and one within the blue network. And then I need to map all these to these outputs. So I also have constraints on these outputs because, uh, well, for example, take this particular switch. It should not see a packet coming from this particular one and one from this one. So how do I code that up? So, um, okay, so let me uh, first write out what we did here, and then we'll do the same for the last level over there. So, um, oh no, that's not really necessary. Um, okay, yeah, so, so at the output side over here, we have similar constraints as we did over here. And in this particular example, just as an example, um, Suppose we look at the packet that is uh, destined for output zero. Well, what is this packet? Well, I know that pi of six is equal to zero, according to my example. So packet six is destined for this particular output zero over here and comes goes through this particular switch. So this packet, um, and also uh, the packet for output four, which is, if you look at the mapping, pi of two is equal to four, so that's packet number two. Well, both of these packets cannot pass through the same subnetwork. Cannot pass through the same subnetwork. So why is this? So let's look at this particular example. So output zero, um, well, comes from uh, packet uh, six, somewhere over there. Now suppose packet six was routed through the red network and at the same moment also output four, the packet that is destined for output four, which is packet number two. Suppose packet two was also going through the red network. Well, then I notice that both of these packets must arrive at this particular switch in order for one to be routed to output zero and the other one to be routed to output four. So in order to avoid congestion in this particular switch over here, we need to have a constraint. The constraint says that the packet for two, uh, for packets two and six, uh, that those two cannot go through the same subnetwork. So we essentially have another edge over here. We already had the constraint. Uh, but it's, it's, it's just the same edge. So let's look at uh, the other um, constraints that we have. Well, for example, um, uh, well, let's uh, look at a different example. So for example, um, if I look at uh, this switch, well, it can, if, 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 if a packet goes through here that needs to end up at one and a packet that goes to five, if those two packets are 
routed through the same red subnetwork, they have to end up here in order to go to both here and to there. So I have congestion of two. So what are those packets? Well, what does pi map to, uh, to one and five? Let's, so let's look over here. We see that pi uh, uh, zero is equal to one and pi uh, one is equal to five. So packet zero and one are actually mapped to output uh, one and five and they should not go both through the same subnetwork. Okay, so we have another edge over here. And now we can continue this. And we have five and seven. So just have a look over there. Say five and seven, they map to the outputs two and six. Again, we have two and six. If they are both mapped to the same network, this one, for example, uh, then I will have a problem. Um, okay, so uh, the other edge is over here. Okay, so what did we do here? We started to write out the constraints on this side, and we wrote out the constraints on this side. Um, uh, so I only looked at the red subnetwork, that's what I realized now. I could also have looked at the blue network. So let's do that also, just to make the picture complete. So for example, let's look at uh, this particular example. The packet six and two should not both be routed through the blue network because then they would both have to go through this switch. One going up to output zero and one going to the left, to the right to output four. So to, in order to avoid congestion at all, at all costs, we have this constraint graph. So now we come to the key insight. And the key insight is to use a two coloring of this, of this uh, graph. So the key insight is a two coloring of the constraint graph. which will lead to a uh, best solution for the routing problem. Okay, so let's uh, do this. So we will color this one blue. As you can see, this is an even cycle. Uh, blue, red, blue, red, um, blue, and red. We'll make this one blue and this one red. Well, it turns out that we can now start our routing process. Um, so for example, um, actually I will draw a new graph to make that really clear. Um, so I have my blue and my red uh, chalk over here to demonstrate what I mean. Um, so what do I, do I do? I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I have the switches that correspond to those. Um, well, if it's colored uh, uh, red, uh, so zero over here is colored red, I will direct it to the red subnetwork. So where is this red subnetwork? It's really contained over here. And the blue one, so this is the red one. And the blue one is right here. And over here we have the outputs. Ranging from zero, one, two, all the way to seven. Okay, so input zero is colored red. We go straight ahead, we want to go to the red network. Input one is colored blue. It goes, therefore, to the blue network. So this is the only way how to do it. Input two is colored red, goes straight ahead. Input three is also colored red, goes straight ahead. Input five, oh, input four is colored blue goes to the blue network, input five goes up to the red network, um, input six goes straight ahead to the blue network, it's colored blue, 
input 7 is also colored blue. Okay, let's look at the outputs. So, for example, um, well, let's have a look at uh, output uh, 0. Um, so, output 0. Um, which packet is mapped to output 0? It's uh, packet number uh, 6. So, 6 was mapped into the blue network, and then it needs to be mapped to uh, output 0. So, it's only one edge that goes from the blue network to output 0, which is uh, this particular one. And then somehow, this one needs to be mapped to this one over here. Now we can continue like this. Um, output 1 should receive a packet from, let's look at the permutation, from 5. So, uh, no, sorry, output 1, uh, pi of 0 is equal to 1. So, packet 0 needs to go to this particular output. Now, packet, packet 0 is in the red network, so there's only one edge that goes from the red network to this output. So, we need to have a connection over here. Now we can continue this. And note and, and demonstrate, and you can test it for yourself too, that output 4 needs to receive a packet from the red network. Actually, it should be this particular one, which happens to be packet number 2. And then we have this one. Uh, right. So let me just finish it. We have this, and we have uh, these two. And we have this one, we have this one, and we have uh, this one. This one goes straight ahead. Uh, this one goes all the way up, and this one goes all the way up. So what do we see? We see that packets over here, that these switch switches only see a packet once, and these ones as well, these one also, and these ones also. So um, we have directed the packets, routed the packets to the red and the blue sub networks in such a way that the congestion at the, uh, at, at the last level and at the first level is still equal to one. Now we use our induction hypothesis, and we conclude that we can map uh, the route that, that we can have a routing from packets from here to here, such that the congestion within the subnetworks is only one. So within the blue as well as in the red. So this is the insight into how this works. And I notice I'm uh, running out of time, so the formal proof we will have to postpone till uh, recitation. But uh, that's uh, actually really a very simple thing to do that right now, to just keep this key inside, and then uh, you can easily uh, prove the uh, theorem. So, but this is the real, the real insight. Thank you.